Rock and roll here at LifeWave now. How's everybody doing? Paula, what's happening? Uh, I'm happy to be here, Jim, and I am actually grateful to be doing great and feeling great. You know, it's been, it, it's it's interesting you say it like that, isn't it? Because we do know that this this thing called the coronavirus is happening. But first up, look, in a little bit, we're going to have John Presky here, founder, creator of this great LifeWave In Touch app. And we're going to do a training session. We're going to spend some time. We're going to drill down. We're going to get into some specificity, some specific things you can do to maximize. And uh, before we do that, we do want to talk about the fact that this coronavirus is making a difference in, in what we're doing as a company and certainly what distributors are doing around Jim, the world. I was thinking it would be really great to just go over the material that you sent us today in that letter, because everybody may not have seen that email, and this is really important stuff, so let's get into that. Yeah, yeah, you make a good point. So what, we, we got a kind of a two-step thing that we're doing. We sent out a, a notification to leaders, our mastermind, global mastermind group, uh, a group of uh, senior presidential directors that are a member of a, what we call a VIP list, and gave them a heads up that a communication is coming regarding the coronavirus. Um, so, so a couple things, think about it. So we've had to cancel not only the, the May tour in Asia, which seemed to make good sense that we would have to do that. We did that, gosh, uh, two, three weeks ago, actually. But as we were approaching the Frankfurt event in Germany, LifeWave Live uh, Germany, we were thinking we might still be able to go. I mean, uh, you know, five, six, seven days ago, Paula, we thought we were going to be able to, uh, to make it. Then right? I heard that, the, the German chancellor, Angela Merkel, said 70% of their population could be at risk to get the virus. Well, you know, people are throwing around big numbers and we have to be measured. And certainly as a company, we're, we're being that. But we did realize that because of perhaps possible travel restrictions, quarantine issues, uh, folks gathering on our behalf, right, in a big room, uh, it started to really not make sense. So we certainly did decide to postpone that event, just like we did the, the, uh, the Asia tour. And we're, we're looking at dates probably in the fall, September, maybe October for that. So that, that I occurred. I have a you? feeling that a lot of people watching this show have been changing travel plans. I myself was supposed to be flying to India through Frankfurt, Germany next yeah. Thursday. And that's not happening because Ger or, uh, India has just canceled all the visas until April 15th. So it is a time that we need to be prudent. I don't think we need to panic or be fearful, but we need to be smart. And so I think for all of those reasons, I decided not to even try getting on an international flight right now. And obviously it was sensitive of LifeWave not to be having an event that people might want to try to get to at their own risk, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, and it's, uh, you talk about how our lives are being affected personally. It's like a six degrees of separation thing. I suspect most people on this call know somebody that's been affected directly by mm -hmm. uh, the coronavirus, one of our translators that uh, works to help us uh, make sure we're, we're prepared in languages as we send out communications, has coronavirus. Mm -hmm. For instance, I was gonna visit my son in uh, the UK, uh, coming back from Frankfurt not going to Frankfurt, not seeing my son. So, you know, these types of things are happening, but almost most importantly for how does it really affect us as distributors, you as distributors on a day-to-day -day basis, it's important that you know this. You know, it is an infectious disease uh, and we cannot touch the, the, the uh, we cannot place LifeWave as a brand, as a technology, next to the coronavirus and make any kind of claim can help, can mitigate, can ward off, can stave off, can tr treat, cure, prevent, none of it. It's a medical claim. So a communication went out today to leaders and another one's in process of being translated for worldwide dissemination that basically says, please be very careful. Don't post anything and, and use the word coronavirus. Don't talk anything about, hey, boost your immune system. Boost is actually not a word you're supposed to be using and should use, can't use it. Why do you think we say the word supports all the time? Supports good health. We don't talk about boosting because the FDA, the FTC looks at that and says, wait a second, you're changing 
you're changing what's happening inside your body? Sounds like a medical claim. What's your product? Gee, you need to be registered with the FDA. So language is important. The words we choose, the power of words, Paula, as you know, in your business, uh, as a therapist, uh, you know, there is things to do and things not to do. So do not touch the coronavirus in any way, shape or form because David has decided that it's one strike and you're out. If you associate and make any kind of a claim in any way regarding this virus, that, that glutathione is going to help, that X39 is going to help, and it's going to be able to protect you against anything like that, one strike, you're out. You'll be, if you're found out, you'll be terminated. It's that serious. Because right now, as we speak, the FDA and the FTC, we have proof that they're watching the marketplace and they are going to uh, go after companies that are taking advantage of right. this um, I, you know, some people are calling it a pandemic or whatever. They're taking advantage of this situation. So all that's to say, I'm being pretty serious right now. It is kind of harsh what I'm saying, but it's, we have to protect the company because the last thing any of us want is to have someone walk through the door and say, Hey, look, you got people saying the following things. You can't do that. We're suspending your ability to operate as a business, things like that. We don't want that to happen. So this is all for our this is all for us. We've got to be careful. And I think I've, I've made my point, haven't I, Paula? Jim, you know, I think you made an interesting point along the way there, among several points. Um, the, not using the word boost. Like, I bet a lot of people didn't realize that could be misconstrued as a medical claim. Are there any other examples like that of verbiage that we should use or should not use? Like when we're talking about X39, are there things that you, the company prefers we say in description or that we don't say? You know, that's pretty important right now because nobody wants to get fired or, you know, sent away from the, the troops here. Yeah, no, exactly. No, that's a good point. Um, I think that the safest way to answer that question, and, as opposed to me being able to list off phrases and phraseology that's accepted versus those that's, that are not, mm -hmm. use the website as a safe place to see how we talk about the benefits associated with the products. Go look at glutathione that's and see great. what we say, okay? Notice how we cloak the benefits. Notice how we talk about the benefits of, of X39. No, think about the words that we don't use uh, because we had to be very careful, frankly, to be honest. Think about this. We're learning that to say that, you know, rapid pain relief associated with X39. Well, we're learning that we're on safe ground, safer ground, if we say rapid minor pain relief. The uh -huh. word minor is an interesting tool or word that allows us to be in a safe area. So it's these, these types of things that we are continually being vigilant about to make sure that, as, that, the, that you, independent distributors, can stay on the reservation and don't make a mistake that can harm yourself yes. or, or, or harm the company because it's just, you can't say it. And look, good intentions, Right, think about it, it's, it's a good intention. Well, wait a second, the coronavirus, it's a problem. Our stuff helps elevate your ability to be healthier. Of course we can say that, right? Well, no, because it's an infectious disease and it becomes a medical claim the minute you go into that. So I think I've made myself clear, just be very, very careful. Uh, you I really know, love I that advice to read that website, study up a little bit on what the company is saying about the different patches, everybody, and then you'll know for sure that you're in a safe zone. Exactly. So I think we've said enough about that. Uh, and, and so again, thanks for your patience as we wanted to touch on that. It's an important topic. Please, everybody, stay healthy, stay safe, do all the things that the medical professionals are suggesting you do, you know, the way you cough, the way you don't shake hands, the social distancing, all, all these types of things to be careful. Just be aware. Um, and by the way, someone tell, told me one last thing I'll say, you know, masks, right? So I was listening to one of the good doctors talking on one of the television programs about the masks, right? You think, well, I'll wear the mask so I won't get the coronavirus or I'll be better protected. And they point out, well, no, actually, you're supposed to wear the wax of the mask when you have it. Because that absolutely keeps you from having any of your saliva and, and breathing and breath, you know, going out and being filtered. Because right. you can get particles on your face, your hands, you can touch your eyes, you can touch yourself. And that mask 
doesn't really protect you in the way that you think it is. So be aware of that even, these little nuances of what we're learning as we deal with this crazy, crazy situation. Anything else, Paul? I'd like to add that? one other thing because I'm the energy psychology girl, that one of the most important things we can all do is keep our positivity going. Stay up, stay positive, don't go into fear, don't obsess on reading all the facts and all of that. Be prudent, be smart, be calm, be happy. I really think that's so important because that's going to keep your vibration high. When your vibration's high, your energy field is strong and you're in better shape. Oh. That's my two cents on that. Oh, that's about nine cents, if you ask me. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's I can go for 15. You tell me. <laughs> All right. So enough on the coronavirus. Let's put that in the box and set it on the shelf over there. Let's be positive because it's coming All up right. next. Uh, John Presky, I know you're there and I know you've been listening. And John is the creator of the LifeWave In Touch app. He's been on a few weeks back and by popular demand, he's here again. He's, he indeed is nursing a cold, by the way. So we all forgive him if he coughs and, and has to blow his nose a couple of times. John, how you doing? I, I'm, you know, as good as I can be with that. So thanks for giving me the little bit of an out there because I may cough and I may sneeze. You never know. But I don't have the bad stuff. I just got a common, <laughs> difficult cold. Yes. And you're alone. You can't affect us. <laughs> That's right. That's what's the beauty of technology. We love this. We can still recruit across the airwaves. And so there you go. Listen to you. Well, you know, look, we're, we're getting some terrific feedback on, on the app. It's, it's a winner. And yet, you know, people still, they want to know more. And so okay. we wanted to take 20, 30 minutes with you and kind of get into some specifics and talk about some of the ways in which we know you and I, as we were developing this together over the last six, eight months, we know right. the power here. And it's really about people just understanding some of the kind of relatively simple, yeah. but you got to keep some things in mind. Let's start off with the fact that, you know, uh, you like to talk about using the app because it's about determining the time. You yeah. use that word a lot because in the end, you have conversations. Someone says yes, someone says no. And you have a particular way that you look at that. How would you characterize that? Um, yeah, I think that the key to this whole industry is timing and duplication, keeping it simple, which is duplication, and figuring out where somebody is at in their point in life. And, and a good example of that is, let's say I don't have a lot of money. Okay, and you know I don't have a lot of money. You're thinking I'd be looking for a business opportunity, let's just say. Um, but you don't know that I might have just gotten a $5,000 bonus. So you hit me up timing's not right but you thought it was so the the point is we don't know what's going on in people's lives so the way the app was built is to you know if you will take a temperature go ahead and send something to them they watch all of it their temperature is better if they watch nothing don't even open the link that tells you something else um and then what you send you know is important you know you you built some beautiful teasers and then a full a full uh two minute one the the point is is that know what is sitting in your app know your your tools know your tools know what you have and think about the timing think about your relationship with somebody and don't just fire off videos say hey how are you doing because people respond to people who care. We've heard that. So mm -hmm. if you ask how they're doing, they say, I'm okay, what's up? You say, I've got a video for you. I'd like you to watch. It's only 30 seconds. Here, hold on. And then you send it. But that is a much better situation than out of the blue, somebody gets a text with a video that's mm -hmm. kind of pre-canned looking, and they go, well, what is this all about? Mm -hmm. So you've ruined the potential timing in a way. So realize that this is a relationship business. It's a conversation. The app is just a tool to help you with your conversations and to help you find out what the timing is. And that's yeah. why we're so big on follow-up reminders, right? Because you can set them, but go ahead, yeah. And you know what, John, I, I think okay. it's important to stress to everybody to watch the videos. Take a couple of minutes yourself, see what's in the videos so you can know what would be appropriate to send different people depending on their level of interest. Right, 100% correct, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and so that it, it is interesting, isn't it? So you could, 
you could be uh, reaching out to someone you haven't seen in six months and you suggest, well, do a little bit of icebreaker and text them for saying, hey, John, how you doing? What's happening? And you come back and say, hey, everything's good. What's going on? And the next thing you know, you're into a conversation using right. some tools from the app. Or let's say you just sat down with somebody uh, that you do know uh, and you kind of move into a conversation talking about things and maybe you end up talking for 30 or 40 minutes. Well, you've probably said a lot. And so yeah. it wouldn't make sense to send a, a beginning 15 or 20 or 30 second video. It might right. make sense to send an entire video, which, which we have in the subject video area, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, you hit that right. So please understand that um, the concept of sending more and more videos until somebody finally responds the way you want is not a good plan. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's really what you see people doing. They just fire off one after the other with the hope that, maybe something will trigger something in them and they'll respond and they'll roll over and say, where do I order? And unfortunately the world doesn't work that way. And I think that um, what we have to realize is that the videos are there to educate a little bit, to, to break the ice, Jim, you said it right. And then get to the point where you have to do one thing and only one thing all the time in this business. And that's ask people to try your product for 30 days. And with, with you guys, it's so easy because you have great science, great price, and a money-back guarantee. So if I had had that in my past, I would just be finding a way to once a day ask somebody to try my product for 30 days on a money-back guarantee to see if it'll do for you what it's done for me. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's the whole business. They're, and I know I'm simplifying. Everybody's saying, well, that's easy for you to say. You don't know my friend Bob. <laughs> well, I, you're right. I don't know your friend, Bob, and maybe I don't want to, but, you know, my point is that realize that, you know, the whole, some people say no, some people say yes, but I can tell you this, the statistics are this. If you will politely ask somebody to try a product for 30 days with a money back guarantee, that's only X dollars. I, I will submit to you unless you really upset people throughout your entire life, six, to, six out of 10 or more will, will try your product. Let me ask you a question in regards yeah. to that, John, because we're talking about this having a little bit of an icebreaker conversation text-wise. Right. Can you text from the app? That's one of the questions we've been asked, and I haven't had that experience because I've only texted when I'm sharing a video. Right. Yeah, you're talking about freeform texting, right? Yes. Right. No, that it doesn't really have that capability to track all that freeform texting, but yeah. inside the... Um, if you're having a, if you, if you remember inside the prospect detail section, we can get there if we need to, there's a section with a mini CRM where you can log that you did text them, that you did follow up by voicemail, you followed up with an email. So you can do that. That is a good But point. I'm talking about just the actual texting conversation I might right. have saying, hey, haven't seen you in a while, but you know, I know you've always been interested in natural health. Right. I'm doing, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So you can't really record that into the app. Right. You can't. Okay. It's going to be on your own text client with your own uh, app, All with right. your own phone. Yep. So I would be texting from my own phone. Then I'd switch into the app to send a video or something. Be correct? Because then you would switch into the app because now you want to make them a prospect and you want to share yeah. something specific. And yeah, so you'll share from the app. Then you'll have a conversation over here. Um, and, and you may document that. That's where the notes, you can put notes into the app above the prospect's mm -hmm. name and history. Um, so all that is there for you to use that as well. And so, Go ahead. John, why don't you, I think you have the ability to bring up your phone and actually we can see it on the screen if you want to, uh, there's a way to do that. I think where it ends up being full screen, you share your screen. So fire that up and kind of get that ready. Yeah. In a way okay. that makes sense. And I, and I think to the point of what you and Paula were just talking about, let's talk about the, the ability to edit what, what we pre-wrote, for instance, right. a thick line. Right. Good idea. An email or a text. Let's get into the flow of that so people are clear about right. how do they access the ability to make any kind of edits. Right. Where is it in the sequence of communicating right. with a prospect? Show us, give us a yeah. sense of that. Okay, so you've got the app up there. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so when you go to share, okay, and that's the share button, and you pick any video you want. When you hit share, the first thing you're going to see is what we call the sample message preview. This is what's been rewritten for you, pre-written for you. And um, it, 
it, it can be changed the minute you get ready to send it out. So let me go through and send it to myself so you guys can see that. So I'm gonna hit the next button. And so since, what your point is right there is you don't make the edit there. You no, can't make it there. You can't make, yeah, because you can see, yeah, there's nothing there. And I know the click here is a little bit confusing down there, right? That, that click here, I've had that, you know, and it looks yeah. like it'll click. So, yes, but no, does. you can't edit there. It's just a preview. We probably should put that word preview big. And, and we are gonna make some uh, changes right here where it says text slash Facebook Messenger slash uh, WhatsApp chat app, you know, because this is the content that goes for mess for that as well. You can see I've okay. got it. And do you know uh, what, John? I, if, it would have helped me a lot because I stayed on that other page for quite a while trying to figure out how to edit the message. Right. If there's somewhere here it could say message. Right. Can, you can, can ch change later. Yeah. Yes. Edit later. Edit yeah. later or something so yep. we know not to keep messing around with right. something that can't be changed. Right. And because uh, and you don't want to rely on people listening to the training video because we talked about it, but you know, you <laughs> can't rely good. on that. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So let's go next. Let me just show you for everybody. So I'm going to go next. And then I'm just going to go to the existing prospects because I know I'm in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to zip down right here to myself. And that preloads me and go. So I'm going to go text first. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I hit next. And I don't want to put a reminder to myself. And then right here. Okay, that happens the first time you're in the app. So right there. So it pulls up your uh, messaging client, if you will, right? So this allows you to tap on it. You can see right here. What you don't want to do is Hang mess on, with- slow the down. Slow down, John. So yeah. I'm looking at my box in which I would, I have the, as you carry the canned text. Yeah. Now is this where I can do some editing? Yeah, if you guys can see my little cursor flashing, can you see it yep. move around? Yeah. Yes, so that means I can edit it and I, that breaks new ground and I breaks, um, you know, I could type whatever I want here. Right. Yep. But just don't mess with this link because this link is what connects you, the rep, the prospect wow. and the video all together so okay. that when they watch it, that's how we know to send you the alert, not somebody else that they watch that video. So that's the whole science behind our technology. So don't mess, but you could change it if you'd like. And then, of course, you send it, as we all know. So that's okay. the flow. Now, on a, um, if you go back to share yeah. and on email, if you want yes. to see that real quick, next, yes. go to existing prospects um, in here. And, of course, my email is in there, so it'll work fine. I'm going to go email, okay. text, no reminder, next. And look what it does. It pulls up my email client from my phone. And, again, you can tap. You can change. Just okay. like that. Piece of cake. So, so that's how it all works, you guys, so right before. So basically, the way to look at it is that you, you kind of move through the system a little bit, and you're kind of getting ready to send, but before you send, that's uh -huh. when you make your edits, whether it's a text, the subject line, the email, those types of things, correct? Right, correct. And, and keep in mind, that's a, that's a great place to do it, and it's also the best place because it's right before you send it out. So people have asked, can they take their entire contact base of their phone and tell the app to, to pull in every contact in your phone? I believe your answer is no, and there's a reason, correct? Well, there's two reasons, and that's a good, and I know you remember, Jim. So there's two reasons why we don't do that. One, for privacy reasons. It just, I've got 2,900 people in my group. Most people are going to share to maybe 50. If you're lucky, they've got influence with 70 people. Okay. Well, why do I want 3,000 people in there? Um, if I have 3,000 people in there, I have privacy issues with each and every one of those people. Mm -hmm. Now has to be notified in some way that if you use it, I have to be able prepared to let them know that their data is being used under the privacy laws, right? So it's, it's a privacy issue, number one. But more practically, <clears throat> you know the top 10 people you're going to you know, recruit. I've been in this business a long time. I literally had maybe 20 people that I was going to recruit. And, and I get through them very quickly. The last thing we want to do is import 3,000 of them and then swipe left, swipe right, looking for the top 20 that I want. You know who they are. And, and if you don't, I, I, I beg to differ because you do and you'll know. So it's okay. not it's, it's a privacy issue, issue, but it's also a practical issue that focuses you in, you in on the act of recruiting as opposed to administrative. And work. by the way, you keep saying recruiting. Right. Yes. You absolutely yes. can use this app for <coughs> customer acquisition as well. Well, that's what I, I call recruiting customers and 
business partners. Okay. To me, it's it's one in the same. It's a recruiting app. This is designed primarily because customers are easier to acquire than business representatives because we're talking about a smaller dollar amount. It, studies show four to six to seven out of 10 people would try a health product from a friend if presented decently. Only one out of 10 is interested at this exact moment in the business of network marketing. So you just, huh. your percentages are very much higher to go for the customer. Second reason that's important um, for a lot of reasons is that there's been a study by the DSA, Direct Selling Association, went 10 years worth of data and they actually proved that 66% of the best performing business representatives were actually customers for 60 days first. Mm. Huh. Nobody will believe that, but I, you should, could have heard a pin drop in that room when they, they put out that data. And so, uh, it, and, it makes, makes and it makes sense. Go ahead. Yeah, it makes total sense. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to become or don't want to step into this as a business until right. they've actually had good, their experience with the product. So they have something genuine to talk about. And right. I find You're, that that's actually really great. Yeah, that it makes it a lot easier. And it's, um, <clears throat> you can't, you, it's tough to be energetic and truthful about a product you've never tried. Hey, right. John, so, so yeah. go to the top left of the screen. Show us where that menu, that hamburger top left, right? Uh-huh, there that it opens is. Up, that opens up this menu. Let's talk about this for a little, this area, okay, okay. first of all. So, and first off, I want to discuss profile for a minute because I know that we've probably, I don't know if we've gotten 20 or if we've gotten 50 you know, or 200, you know more than me. People are of the impression that when they call, when they get a hold of the customer service or, the, or more importantly, when they go into the back office and uh -huh. they make a change to their email or they make a change to their phone number, they think that that information ripples out through all databases that LifeWave controls. But the fact is, and, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm imparting this information right now, that does not occur. And so as a result, the particular database that in touch life of in touch draws from hasn't seen that change to the phone number or the email address talk about that for a little bit john um so we believe that we're pulling from a database that is associated with what we call display data your replicated website so if i went to okay. one of your reps replicated website there would be that person's generally a phone number and a contact email on that website and that's, that is driven from a display database. We call it the display, meaning it's okay. what your display. Mm -hmm. So we pull from that database because we believe that that's the database that reps would want their prospects to see. If it's on the replicated website, well, then, of course, it would make sense to have it, you know, in the app. Well, what's happening is that the, that's what we're doing. The problem is where the reps can go in and edit, okay, what they can edit. The problem is, is that is not the display data. That's the okay. business data. That's their account data with you at LifeWave. And so, so right. what, a, what a member or distributor, what folks listening right now, watching right now, what you need to do is if you've gone into your back office recently or even six months ago, all right, call customer service and make sure yep. that your data that is in your um, back office is also in the display data, uh, the replicated site area. I think that's the way to put it, right, John? Yeah, that's the way to put it. And they can do it in five seconds. I think we've had, if I had to, be, I had to gauge it, Jim, we probably had 30 or 40. It's okay. not overwhelming, considering you have uh, you know, almost over 2,000 people using the app worldwide. Okay, all right, fair so, enough. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. Uh, Paula, go ahead, jump on, in. I've got a question here yeah. since we're in this little blue strip menu here. Mm -hmm. Down where it says about contact and log out. Okay. So is is the contact, um, is that link there where people go if they want to add new contacts? No, that, that, that's, a, no that's a contact us. So let me tap on it. Oh. This, okay. this is contact for if you want to contact, and we can change that to contact us if you'd like. Um, and this is the LifeWave customer service information yeah. for issues. And then if you need to submit a ticket to the app, and plenty of the reps do know how to do that because they're seeing it, they would just click on this and it would submit a ticket right into our system. So let me ask you, if I just want to put new contacts directly into the app, we've been asked that question by our, our listeners, how do we do it? 
Right. So um, it's kind of like what Jim said. You can't import, right? You cannot import your address book or import. Well, I don't want to import. I want to put it in myself. Right. right. So, well, you can't actually, the only way people show up. Okay. So you have contacts in your phone and this section here, which is with here, is called prospects. Right. Okay. We only consider someone a prospect if you've actually shared something to them. Oh. So people arrive here in this system as a warm coffee cup through the act of sharing content. I we see. don't allow just people to just kind of be put in or manually put in. Now, what's kind of nice is that people want to know about Facebook Messenger and you, you make a good point. So I'm going to go down to the share button down in the lower left and I'm going to go to the grid. Let me talk about Facebook Messenger for a brief moment because this is a point of contention, if you will. A lot of people think because they hear the word Facebook that they should post to Facebook Messenger and they go and they hit post. And then, you know, you got all these things come up and lo and behold, there's Messenger. It does, Messenger is not a postable though. Posting should be Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Those are posting sections, okay? Messenger is a one-to-one -one share. You, you message people directly. So that's one-to-one. -one. So you don't post to Messenger, but it's sitting there and that confuses a lot of people, okay? Yeah. So let me go back. The way you use Messenger is, let's say I wanna, I wanna, I, I know my friend Rylan Love. Okay, Rylan is, uh, um, you know, he's on Messenger with me. I want to send a video to him. Let me just do that real quick, okay? I'm going to hit share of that video. I'm going to hit next because that's a preview, okay? I don't have his email. I don't have his phone number, right? Okay, because he's only on Messenger possibly. So I'm just going to type him in real quick. Okay, next. And there you go, just like that. And hit next, next, we're done, next. And just like that, I tap him and we go next. So. And now look where I'm at. I just tap Messenger. I hit Next. I don't need a reminder for now. Um, and there you go. You hit Start. It's going to activate Messenger. Oh, I go down. It just happens. There's Rylan right there. I tap on him. Okay, what do I do? I tap on the bubble. I hold. I paste. I send. And just like that, it goes out. So that's how fast you can do, sorry about that. That's how fast you can do Facebook Messenger. So keep in mind, it is a share process, okay? It is no. not a, sorry guys, it is a share process. It is not a post process. All right, so let's go, let's go back to Paula's question though. So she was saying, look, I have a contact. I, I wanna enter him in. So I guess what you would do is if you have a contact uh, that you think you, 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 you picked yourself wanting to share some content with, you would just enter that contact into your phone. Then when you want to share something, you could then share and then you go seek that contact from your phone or you can share and manually type in that person right, right. Then there. Is that correct? You're 100% correct. And isn't kind of funny, I just shared via messenger and Rylan Love has already looked at that video. <laughs> that's how effective that's how effective that was right so yes that's correct so you you get in there through the act of sharing um and all i'm saying now what you'll see is that if i go to prospects now okay button at the I, bottom there yep down at the bottom i hit that little prospect heads okay and i go up to filter and sort which i love to do and i love my recent activity button and apply and look what it does. It puts Ryland right at the top. It's the most recent thing that's happened. And look what I, I now know. Ryland watched 100% of that video I just shared. It's fantastic. And I can tap on it and see that that was the video that says it all. He watched 100%. I think Ryland might be somebody I want to talk to to follow up <laughs> with, right? So that's, that's the whole point of the app is what you just saw right there. The timing for Ryland is most likely right. I see. So, so, Paula, does that answer your question relative to the whole contact thing and, and entering in a prospect? Yes, yes. I feel clear about that now, but we have also been asked for people, could you, de by people, can you demonstrate, like, if I want to post that video or post something from the app onto Facebook, uh -huh. what are the steps? Okay. So, there's two things you can do. Um, let me go to the share grid. Okay. Okay. 
Now you can post anything you want, but what I want to show you guys is the secret that you have because you can post all the videos you want to post and that's perfectly fine and people will watch them. And of course you will not get an alert because we don't know who's watching it. Right? So we can't really send you alerts. Steve Smith's okay. watching it because we don't know. So that's why we've designed these beautiful, um, images that can be shared right here social media images to post okay mm -hmm. and these are what are offers now here's the thing sharing is what we call one-to-one -one marketing sharing directly right that's facebook messenger that's text that's email posting mm -hmm. is one to many the problem with one to many is that you you can't talk to them you're just making noise so you want to bring one to many down to one to one right? That's the goal of every post. So these images right here were designed for you to post by tapping post. And I'll just kind of go right over here to Facebook. And I'm going to say, hey, click below so we can discuss. Okay. So I'm just putting that out to Facebook. So I hit next. And just like that, off the image goes to Facebook. It's that fast. Now here, let's look at that. And what does that look like on Facebook? Sorry about that. Okay, let's get down here. Let me see what I got here. It posts usually rather quickly. Okay, it doesn't want to. Everybody must be on Facebook today. <laughs> of okay, so, but we'll find out here in a little bit to get with me. That's not it. So usually it posts right away. Let's find it. There it is, I bet. There we go. So there's a beautiful image. Look at that. Hey, so John, those 15 seconds that that took, we don't have time for that. I need to have it in a half a second. <laughs> of my life. Well, right. So here's the best part. If you tap on this image, Remember I said, when you post a, um, there, it's one to many. But when you get them to come out of Facebook, okay, now it's going one to, one to what do you call one to one? And oh, now this- Hang on. So- Yeah, how so, did you do that? <laughs> yeah, so what are, you, what are you saying just happened there? So you're as if you were the, you're watching on Facebook, you saw this post, you clicked on it, and you, then- it takes you, I, yeah, it takes you out of Facebook and into oh. Eat That Rep's replicated site. Okay. So if I, if I was a rep and I clicked on website, it'd go there, but this is the beauty. Um. So if I request more info and I just put in T-Y-U uh, and I put in, I'll do this very quickly because it's important for people to see the power of this. Okay. And then let me just get something. I'm just putting in a little bit of stuff here. Okay. And then what happens is this. So they submit their information. They give consent, which is beautiful. And they hit request more info. So what happens is at that point is look at the top. That's how fast I just got an information request from Facebook. Uh -huh. So you've just gone from one to many where you posted, right? You've brought it down to one to one. Now I can close this out. I can go to my prospects again down here. And again, what do I love? I love my recent activity button. I love this recent activity. Apply and look who's at the top, the new purple lead right there. And I, all I got to do is I tap and I go, cool. More info requested. Love it. Go to details. And there's their information. All I got to do is hit share content. Now I'm one-to-one -one again, right? So that pushes you back to, into the share grid for t uh, videos and things like that, correct? Right. So we brought you with a post, one-to-many, down to one-to-one. -to -one. Mm -hmm. That's the goal of social. That's Everybody says, oh, because they're just not going to roll over and sign up. It just doesn't happen. Right. Well, so and you, I guess the other thing for folks to, to realize here is that, you know, certainly, you know, a distributor has their own Facebook uh a page right and they right. to it no and then someone clicks on that they're not going to get that interactivity they're not going to know who's clicked that's the difference posting they, they, from the app right versus right posting from their own their own page right because when you share from the app you know we know who it is because we're sharing with an individual either a messenger or direct from text but when you post you just don't know who's clicking until they give you their information. This is lead generation. It looked rather simple, and it is, but it's really state-of-the-art lead gen from social. You can post and, these images, and there you go. So, John, in order for this 
you're posting to be tied into the app, you can only post what's on the app, right? Right, yeah. If you're posting stuff, you know, from somewhere else, it, it, there's no lead so, gen, there's no contact manager. So go down to that, go down to that area right now. Go down to the share area, go down to the posting of social show. I think we've got this eight, I think we've got eight things to post down here. Take a look. There's yeah, one, there, just go, go to the left. Let's see what we got here. We've got different types of things. Five, things, six, seven, stuff. eight. Yeah, there's eight of them, yeah. So we're adding more and more over time. Probably, I don't want to say it's weekly, probably every two weeks now, we're adding three or four or five additional posts. So people right. can consistently keep them fresh in some manner. Right. And, and, that, can, they, and can they post these things into an email? Uh, you wouldn't really want it. Well, if you have an email, you already have the person, right? Well, <laughs> sorry. we were just asked if, in a question here, if any of these images that the company's provided can right. be somehow copied into an email. Oh, sure. Well, you, well, I guess you could, but let me ask you, um, if, you ha if you're going to email a prospect, you obviously know their name and you have their email address, mm -hmm. I would say that some of these other pieces are much better to email than an image. The image is kind of like a hook. I see. Yeah, and I, I, I can see why somebody might want to put it in an email. Um, and you can see that um, what Jeannie's done on some of these images, it's got a share. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could actually share it via oh. email. Oh, see? I see. And, oh, uh, you know, cool. yeah, I, you know, we could do that. So you could do that and you could just send it and next and we'll just give you a whirl here. Mm -hmm. Let's go to email next. And there you go. And when they click on it, it'll show the image. Oh, cool. How about you know, that? And they click where it says click here. Yeah, they'll see I, the image. I but see. Yeah. So um, yeah, I gotta I was gonna delete the draft. But you know, they're really not designed for that. You know what I mean? That's that's the whole point. Video so, is better with email. Uh -huh. So John, go back up to the top left menu, what we call the admin menu, and let's go into that blue strip as Paula calls it. And um, the training. Click on training so people understand what's there. And on the training module, we have several things, don't we? So what we did, and I, I can talk through some of this, right? Yeah. We, we, if you go to the first one there to the left, we, we basically took what you did our first visit when we did right. Live Live Now. And we, uh, I, in post-production using editing gear, knocked that down to a very tight beginning, middle and end with you, Paula and myself, talking right. about the application. So there is a training module right there. Now go to your right to that middle one, John, where you've got the five-step process. Talk about that for a little bit. Is that something that you can kind of talk us through for a second? Yeah, and I'm, I'm fading a little here, so I might have to blow my nose. But yeah, so this is what the app was designed to do for you. It's a recruiting app, right? So what are you trying to do with the app? This is just a nice review of what you're trying to do. You're trying to peak interest in the beginning, and that's through the sharing, right? Or you're yeah. posting of an image for lead capture. And then this is the timing. You're trying to sort and figure out who's ready to do business today. And are they interested in the product? Are they interested in the business or both? If they're interested in the business, what we like to do is move them along and get them some information. But sometimes it's best to use a three-way call to invite somebody to watch a video presentation because it involves your team and you start talking to the prospect about your team and having a team to work with, right? That's why three-way call is fun. And then you get them to the event. Now, the event these days is just going to be an immediate video because nobody's going to see each other anymore, right? So we're just going to do a video <laughs> and then... Of course, we're going to ask them if they liked what they saw and would they like to enroll as a business partner or as a customer? What would you like to do? So it kind of helps people understand the flow of right. really kind of how this is designed to be. A couple, right. couple of questions from folks. They're saying, let me see, in order to share a post on Facebook, we would need to have the Facebook app on our phones, correct? Right. Correct. A hundred percent. Correct. A thousand percent. Which, which is better, posting to a friend's new feed or a friend's timeline? Um, couldn't tell you the difference of that. I mean, here's the thing. Um, generally, I would just post it. Um, if you want to post it to a friend's feed and you're going to go that invasive to them, why don't you just reach out to them via sh Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. and just share one to one? You there know, you yeah. That's post posting is really trying to capture people you don't already know that you may not talk too much, that kind of thing. If you've already got somebody that you feel comfortable enough to be throwing something into their feed, 
I, I would go ahead and just use Messenger and send them a video and ask them how they liked it. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, Paul, unless you've got some, there's one more message uh, question here that's being asked, and it kind of pulls us into this the three-way calls, which of course is a oh, yes. pretty I was interesting. I'm actually going to bring that up. <laughs> oh, go for it. Yeah, talk about it. So, how do they handle a three-way call from the app, John? Okay, so this is how three-way call works. So, first of all, what you have to know is that the three-way call system is a po is a um, it's a poke system. It's a system that you are using to um, set up and then tell your upline, hey, I need help to do a three-way call. Are you available or not, right? Mm -hmm. you, you follow me here? So yeah. first thing you do is you go find your upline's login, that username that they're using to log in the app. You use one, they use one. So you ask your upline, hey, what's your username? I want to add you as a helper. And you put that username in there and you hit add. So for me, because I'm not in here, let's just put it in here. I'll show you what it is. Okay, and I'm going to add. And it's going to say, send helper set up message to John. Yeah, that's what I want to do. So this is what happens. And then what happens is I, John Presky, okay, will get a push eventually here saying, hey, will you help John Presky with future three-way calls? And I'll say, sure, I'm happy to do that, right? And then what I do, so I can go in here. Let me see if it's there. There it is. So I go, yes, I'm going to help you with future three-way calls. So I go, okay. And then look what happens. Yep, John's helped. Okay, so good. So now I go back to three-way call. So now I've done what's called the setup phase, okay? And let me go to three-way call. So now I've got these three people that are my upline that I've all set up, right? That's kind of how it is. So, okay, so let's say Gregory's there, and I say, wow, I got my friend Steve. You know, he really wants to talk to Greg. So I'm going to tap on request call with Greg, and I'm going to request a call with myself just so you can see you can do one quickly. So there's one right there. That's the one I did to myself. John's helping, wants to request to help with three-way call. Click a button to indicate your availability. So me as the upline to myself here, I say, yeah, I'm ready, but give me 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And just like that, it sends back the alert that says, John's required, replied. He's happy to help. He's available in 15 minutes. Here's his phone number. It's right. a setup. It's just a poke system to set up. So now you got to go do the three-way. Now you got to do a conference call yourself. All right. So this is a, it's a, you call it a poke, P-O-K-E. Yeah. You're poking somebody. You're doing a setup basically. Yeah. You're, so the three-way call system in the LifeWave InTouch app is a method to have on deck several people that have set, have committed to you that they will help you when right. you want to do a three-way call. So then you, whenever you want to do one, you go into the app and you can poke John Presky. You can yeah. poke Laura Shaw. You can poke Jim Caldwell. And whoever comes back first and says, yeah, I'm available, you say, great. I'm going to, I need it in 15 minutes. Here we go. And you're off to the race. Then you use your own phone and do yeah. a three-way call. Right. Absolutely. It's just like a setup. It's a poke setup system. Yep. Got it. Okay. Just, just for clarification, guys. So, John, when you go into three-way calls, when you're first setting this up, you right. need the username, did you say, that this yep. other person has used right. on the app, correct? Yeah, well, the username they log into their back office and into the app with. Okay. Yep. So, like, because I had, had helper, there you go, it says username right there. Mm -hmm. so you and get then your, the app yep. automatically adds their phone number, you don't have to know that. No, okay. The app automatically, if you put in their username and they are actually in, they've downloaded the app and logged in, they don't have to be in the app at the time, right. um, it will find them. And it'll say, is Steve Smith the person you want to connect with? You go, yep. And you just, just like I did with myself, remember? Ah, so you just said something very important. You they got to be on the app. <laughs> yes. All right. So that's important to know. If I yeah, want so, to, if you, so if it comes back and says, can't find him, it's one of two things. They either aren't on the system or it's a bad username. I see. Okay. Right. That, that's good to know. Cause I would have been looking, sometimes people's username is not the same as their real name. Oh no. It's their, in your system. 90% of the time it appears to be their ID number. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Right. So the key there is to anybody that you know, you'd like to do a three-way call, you're gonna to wanna to contact them to make sure they have the app downloaded to their phone right. yep. and then indicate to them, hey, 
I want you to be a friend right. of mine to work with me on three-way calls. Right. And that usually, I mean, in my experience of having been in the business, that's what people who sign people up do. We work together. Yeah, for sure. We talk. For sure. Yeah. All right. We've had uh, we've had a great run. I, we've 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 kind of addressed a whole bunch of things. I'm happy to say, John. Why don't you go ahead and unless there's any last minute things you know you'd like to make sure we're clear on before you jump away. No, I think you hit the major areas of you know Facebook Messenger, how to you know share, not post to Messenger. Uh, you know, we talked about three way call. We talked about the problem with your email, your call life wave. So we hit all the high points that have been the only real issues we see at all. But more importantly, it's a recruiting app, and that means new customers, new reps. Think about your tools that are available in the share grid. Think about who you're talking to. Be human. Send them a hey, how are you doing? and talk to them like a normal person, share some information, and above all, get comfortable in asking people to try the product for 30 days, risk-free. That's, like, that's the business. And I like your line that you say, and see if it did, does for you, you what, it, what did it did for me. me. You're not even, gonna know. Because yeah. even that sentence right there begs a further conversation where someone might say, well, what did it do for you? And then right. you're it, telling your story. That's right? right, so that's what you want to do. You yeah. always want to stay tight. This is about sharing very realistic information. It's not about the science 24 seven and microns. And it's, it's about one person who knows another person saying, I'd like you to be healthier. Why don't you try this for a month and see if it does for you what it did for me. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, they can say yes, no, or maybe and they say, no, say no problem. Do you know anybody that could really use this product? Cause I know, you know, a lot of people. By the way, do you think people should post on their story, on their Facebook story in that area? Does that make sense? Do you, should they post their story in Facebook? Should they post on their, you know, we, we've all got yeah. stories, the Facebook story, I just posted yeah. the story. Should we send a post to someone's story or to our own personal story? Um, you know, I, I, I like the, uh, you know, I, you could give a personal story with people on Facebook, but I just think that you should be a little more personal with people you know and use Messenger and not post. Great. I, I, I think because there's so much posting on Facebook right now, there, it's just become noise. Yeah. And, you know, so you just want to really get good at getting it down to one to one. That's what the business is. It's one to one yeah. marketing. Well, okay. look, uh, I know that Paul and I, Paul and I both appreciate uh, your knowledge. Uh, the fact that you were a distributor in the field you, that motivated you to develop this in the first place. You yeah. have perspective. You have, you understand the nuances of the give and take in terms of developing a relationships with somebody. Yep. So thank you, John. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for taking the time to come on. Yeah. Well, thank you. Look forward to it again when I'm feeling better. Thanks again, yeah. everybody. Great, John. <laughs> really feel really better, helpful. Really good, thank you. Really good information. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you, Paula. Take care, y'all. A whole bunch of thank yous. whole bunch of thank yous. All good. <laughs> okay. John. Thanks very much. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, gosh, Paul, I got to tell you, let's see, he's going to hopefully turn off his, uh, he's going to disconnect his uh, desktop there, hopefully. And we, there we go. Oh, there baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about that, Paula? What'd you think? Oh, incredibly helpful. Really, really helpful. I think really we should do this sporadically, you know, especially like we gathered a lot of questions from the emails and then we were able to ask them. I, I hope the feedback we're going to get is that this was an exceptionally helpful show for people with the, the need that they actually have. Yeah, and, and you know, while we're here, I'm gonna take a look at just a few more questions here. Let's see, uh, thank you, thank you, really helps. Will you please explain how to get the app for some, uh, some new people? Well, by the way, you find it obviously in your app store and is LifeWave In Touch, that's what it's called, not just In Touch. Life Wave in Touch, both app stores, download it. You'll go through an onboarding process. You'll sign a privacy statement where you accept and you're, you're in it. And then you'll want to play around in that. As mm -hmm. he talked about, you know, you have to know what arrows you have in your quiver before you start shooting. So you got to know what's here. What's the content? Take a look. Look at the videos. Understand. Look at everything so you know, you know, the content that's here. And there's a whole bunch. And, and Paula, small detail. We're about ready to pull the trigger on six more languages for this app Ooh, that'll, be, wow. that'll be residing in the app. Cool. Where if I'm in Italy, I'll be able to do this in Italian. If I'm in uh, French, uh, France, I'll be able to post in French, you know, do these types of things. So we're moving in that direction. And All you know happening. what was my favorite question on the sheet we got was, will we be able to watch LifeWave now from the app? 
that was fun. But <laughs> they can't, they can't watch it on the app at this point in time. And we don't know that that will ever be a possibility, right? Well, yeah, you know, watching the app, uh, you know, watching this, this show on the app live, it's not necessary. You just go to your, right. your Facebook live. Oh, or, no, yeah, they couldn't see it live. But I mean, even, you know, having it archived there or anything, but yeah. Yes, you know, it was just nice to know that they cared enough about the show that they wanted to know if they could see it on that app. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think there's one more. See, someone said I posted it, sent a message, and someone saw it, and they already know it. Awesome. Exactly. Gee, can I talk to someone who's not on my upline like my physician? Well, uh, if he's not a distributor, uh, if he or she is not a distributor, uh, then by definition, they can't participate in this app. All right. So mm -hmm. this is all about distributors. Uh, and uh, when you're a distributor, you can use the app and you can use it to reach out to people that you don't know. So you can certainly contact your physician using the app, but he can't participate in a three way call, things like that if he's not a distributor. So that answers that question. Um, what's the cost could, of the app? Maybe we better clarify that he could be in a three way call, but not his he's not in the app. You know, like if you just were talking with a, somebody that's a prospect and your physician was using the product, then he could be in on the conversation from your own phone because you have to call from your own phone anyway, right? Oh, sure. You just, just can't. In case that was a misunderstanding. I might have gotten it wrong, but just wanted to clarify. Yeah, you just can't poke and set up that right. position as someone. There you go. Be you can't helper. poke from the app. The guy okay. who's not in it. Yeah, exactly. They can't be included as, as a helper for three-way calls. Right. So the cost, someone's asking what the cost of the app is. Well, let me talk about that for a second. So we have a group in LifeWave that's currently using a different app. They decided to not partake in this one and they've chosen a different one and that's, that's okay. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, uh, and I believe it's in the neighborhood of $20 a month for, for that. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to besmirch uh, the dynamic of that. I, I know a few things about that. And just, you know, people make their own decisions. They're free to do what they want to do. This app, this app is free for the foreseeable future. So it doesn't cost you a nickel. And, and we decided to do that because it just made sense for us to help people develop an additional method for being able to build their business and acquire new customers. We, we like John a lot. He's, he's salt to the earth. He's been incredibly helpful. And it just made sense for us to charge a big donut hole for, for this app. And we'll see how long that goes. But for now, it's free. How yeah. about that, Paula? That's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. And shall we tell them about our promo? Well, yeah. What the heck is our promo again? I, I mean, don't... actually, not our promo, but our giveaway, you know, for this show. Not the LifeWave promo. I don't want to miss misinform uh, anybody. But recently, uh, I met a man who had a, a LifeWave patch on and I said to him, is that a LifeWave patch? And he said, yes, do you know about LifeWave? And I said, well, absolutely. And I said, how did you find out about it? And he said, I've had trouble with this knee for years. I was limping into Walmart and a woman standing outside of Walmart walked up to me, total stranger and said, I see you're in some pain. I have these patches made by LifeWave that have no drugs or chemicals in them. If you're interested in trying them on your pain, and funny, I've had lots of people say, I'll do anything to get out of pain. So right. he took the patches and he was one of those overnight wonders. It was X39. And by the next day, his knee felt better. And one, I forgot the most important part. She said, take these patches, try them. And if you like them and want more, here's my card. So this was her opening conversation, opening, you know, finding new prospects. This was her thing. She would wait outside Walmart, which I think is actually pretty funny and, and clever. Wait outside Walmart, watch people walking in in pain, offer them a, a few patches. And then, and like what happened to him, the next day he was on the phone to her and said, what are these and how do I get more? 
And she told him that's how she's built her whole business. I don't know who she is. I only know it happened in Palm Springs. So somewhere out there is a pretty smart lady hanging out in front of Walmart. <laughs> well, it's an interesting story because you can apply what you just said and what that person is doing can, can really apply to anything. Think about it. You know, fast growing sport these days is pickleball. Paula, you know about this. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, in, so think about if you decide to just socially start to engage and play the sport of pickleball, guess what? You could be on the lookout for people that are limping, not playing as hard as they used to, seem to be wow. rubbing their shoulder. They've got a problem and you've got an okay. opening. Brace say, hey, or something. Hey, I've got something for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. that simple. When you think about, hey, you've got some problem. I got something for that. What is it? Well, like that what we want you guys to write into us about this week. We're going to give an X39 and a glutathione, a little package to the second and fifth person that email because our next show is on the 25th. You know how I like to tie those things together. So the second and fifth email we get telling us what's your way of breaking open a new conversation with somebody about LifeWave. You may not want to lurk in front of Walmart. Maybe you've got a better idea. <laughs> so and we send, want to know what you're doing, and we'll share that with everybody next time. And send that to now at lifewave.com. Yes. And, of course, we'll be watching for that. And, look, by the way, next uh, two weeks out, 25th, here's what we're doing. We're going we're gonna to find, we're going to identify, we're going to call and get two accomplished leaders in LifeWave and we're gonna bring them on and we're gonna have a conversation about best practices, how do you build, how do you acquire customers, how do you keep your team excited, what yeah. are you doing, how'd you do it, what'd you do, right? All of that, let's get yeah. into it. Let's talk turkey about the, 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 the business of building in LifeWave, whether it's customers, or, or distributors and, and let's find out. Let's, let's, let's get into that. I know a lot of people have been asking for it, Paula. Mm -hmm. That should be a good one, huh? And I, I wanna encourage everybody to do what you did this time with the app. You know, send a, email us your questions so we're asking the things you actually wanna know, not what just interests us. We're doing yeah. this for you. And we've, we've learned enough now. I think we've had on John twice and I've been around him a long time. So we definitely know enough to be dangerous. So we probably can't answer <laughs> a solid, I don't know, give or take 80% of the questions now. So yes, absolutely, Paul, a great idea. Use now at lifewave.com as you want to, you know, in, in, introduce topics that we should discuss, questions you have that you'd like to see us answer on LifeWave now, and we'll go for it. So have we talked about, are we, are we done here, Paula? Are we finished? I think we better be. We've been on a long time. <laughs> Holy cow, it's after seven in Pacific. This is a long oh one for God. sure. It's a record breaker. Thanks, everybody, for sticking with us. We really enjoyed sharing this information with you. Paula, thank you so much. Thank you, and we'll see you all on the 25th. See you then. Have a great one and continued success, everyone. Stay safe. I think we're out.